Have you ever dreamed of sailing around the world, taking your family and raising your children in clean, natural environments, going to remote places accessible only by sailboat, surfing uncrowded breaks only the locals know about, living close to nature, catching your own dinner or letting it go if it's more than you need, experiencing other cultures, their lifestyles, customs, their food, and their contests. That was our dream. If you share a similar dream, join us for part one of our World Sailing Safari as we sail from Virginia to Tahiti. It was now that a strange thing happened. The trade winds that always blow out of the east from Tahiti to Bora Bora had stopped and instead were blowing from the west from Bora Bora to Tahiti. We had fallen in love with Huahini and thought this would be a good opportunity to return without having to beat into the wind. I had really enjoyed the surf in Huahini and couldn't wait to get back. Liz and the children loved the fishing and shelling. We had a perfect breeze as we sailed from the pass at Bora Bora. We would sail all night and heave to off Huahini in the morning. We decided to set the mizzen staysail and take full advantage of the following wind. This was a favorable wind for us, but for the yachts trying to reach Huahini from Tahiti, it was an unexpected hardship. For one yacht in particular, it was an unlucky wind. As we lay safely anchored in Huahini the next night, I noticed a red running light at sea that was not moving up and down with the waves anymore. I immediately got on the radio on channel 16, the emergency channel, and asked if there was a yacht in distress on the reef by the pass. A voice with a heavy German accent came back immediately and said, yes, he had struck the reef. He was alone, and he was okay. The boat was okay. No water was in the bilge yet. And please contact his friend Helmut, the manager of the Bali High Hotel. The next morning we went out to see what we could do. Utz had been one of the first seven men to sail around the world single-handedly. Now he was on his fourth time around. He had gotten tired of beating against the wind and tried to enter the pass at night, mistaking the range lights. The lower range light was out. The name of his boat was Frauken, the little lady in German. He had left Germany in 1964 in his first circumnavigation. He had built the boat from the hull of an old European fishing boat. The bolts holding the iron keel had bent as he grounded on the reef but the hull had been sheathed in heavy fiberglass and had not cracked or broken. She was dry down below. We set right to work. I tried to remove the self-steering gear, but ended up removing the rudder instead. Utz started rigging lines to secure her to the reef. If the wind and seas should come up now, she would probably be pounded against the coral and be broken up as she was swept back out to sea through the surf. After that, the first order of business was unloading the boat completely, getting all the weight possible out of the boat. We peeled small logs that were very slippery without the bark, jacked up the boat, and put these under her. Then two fishing boats that usually fish for Benito were to pull on the ropes we had attached to Frauken. The current was strong off the reef, so keeping the boats on station was going to be difficult. Three days later, we had the highest tide of the month. No storms had intervened. It was now or never. We had to get the Frauken off the reef and back into the ocean. It was a great feeling when she first moved. Everyone, even Utz, had been doubtful. Now maybe she would come off the reef after all. Utz looked like a conductor of a symphony. The Benito boats roared in response. This time they pulled together and the bow slid around. She was really moving now. The critical pull lay ahead. If she got hung up as she was pulled through the surf, she would be pounded to pieces. But Frauken moved and kept on moving. all happy for Utz. He had been real lucky. We knew of five other yachts that had been lost on reefs this year. But it could happen to anybody. Utz had probably sailed over 200,000 miles. We had only put about 25,000 miles on the log of Castanet, and we still had a lot of reefs to miss. The crew of the Calypso had heard that there was a yacht on the reef and appeared early next morning, but they were too late for this adventure. 
Our course would take us to American Samoa, Tonga, Minerva Reef, New Zealand, Fiji, Vanuatu, and New Caledonia before we would finally make Australia. But that's a whole other story. Thank you for joining us for this part one of our World Sailing Safari. Thank you.